I'm really observing that the symptoms from this long COVID is a parallel epidemic. Tens of thousands of people worldwide are having post-COVID long-haul symptoms. And the most common symptom is fatigue, but also headaches, decreased attention, problems with the memory, shortness of breath, distortion of your smell, muscle weakness, brain fog, post-exercise issues. There's really only one solution, and that is attacking the root cause with a remedy or solution that doesn't give you more side effects. That's what I'm going to talk about. Long-haul symptoms are usually worsened by stress, both mental stress and physical stress, like exercise or overexerting yourself. So what the heck is going on with this condition? Well, I did a major deep dive on this topic, and I have some really good news for you. But first, I want to give you a brief summary of what's really going on behind this problem. There's actually growing evidence showing this problem strongly associated with an alteration in the vitamin D genes. So if someone has a problem genetically that predisposes them to having vitamin D deficiencies, they're going to have more long COVID symptoms, and there's going to be a much higher incidence of developing symptoms way past this original infection when it should be normally healed. Uh, things just keep going and going and persisting. So unfortunately, the medical profession just does not know what to do with this problem. And I, I think I know why. I mean, what are they going to do with it? Is there another drug that they can use? No, especially as it relates to vitamin D. There's no drug you can use to uh, override vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiencies greatly increases a person's susceptibility to all viruses, including COVID-19. Number two, the most important vitamin for the immune system is vitamin D. And most of the evidence that I found relates to genetic errors involving the enzymes that make vitamin D in your body. So whether you get vitamin D from the sun or you get it from the diet or even a supplement, it has to go through all these biochemical uh, steps in order for it to be activated. And all of these steps involve different enzymes and different genes that can influence this whole manufacturing and production line. Now, in a recent video, and this is very interesting, I don't know if you saw my video on uh, vitamin D toxicity, I talked about this genetic piece of the puzzle uh, because I've been really interested in DNA and looking at um, what's called polymorphisms, which are alterations or genetic errors in various things. And this vitamin D gene connection is fascinating because I went through all 21 people that I evaluated, and there's one common theme that showed up with 100% of these people, and that is this. They all had at least one defect or error with their genetics relating to vitamin D. Now, this could be coincidence. It could be that the next 21 uh, people that I evaluate have no problems with vitamin D. But I find it very, very interesting that all 21 had a problem with vitamin D, which can relate to absorption, producing vitamin D, activating uh, vitamin D from the inactive to the active, or even the absorption of vitamin D in the receptor uh, in the first place, like on your skin or in your immune system. Now, if we compound that on top of the severe and significant demand for vitamin D when someone goes through an infection, and the fact that viruses in general downgrade the vitamin D receptor as a strategy to starve you off of your immune system on top of a vitamin D deficiency because it's literally impossible to get vitamin D from the diet. And you can get it from the sun if you expose yourself long enough to get it in the sun, but just walking outside, having the sun on your face is not going to give you enough. You have to have your shirt off or expose a lot of your skin. And vitamin D from the sun is kind of seasonal. You can't get very much vitamin D in the winter. And also you get less as you live further away from the equator. On top of other barriers too, like being older decreases your ability to absorb vitamin D. Having darker skin decreases your absorption for vitamin D. Being overweight or having some metabolic syndrome disease decreases your absorption of vitamin D. As you can see, a lot of evidence points to this one problem of a vitamin D deficiency, but until recently, I didn't know the significance of this genetic weakness that explains a lot. It explains why some people that are taking the normal amount of vitamin D, like 600 IUs or 800 IUs, are not even getting 
close to what they really need. And by the way, the research on these RDAs for uh, vitamin D are based mainly on bone. They're not based on the new information with our other requirements for our immune system and other functions. Your vitamin D level directly correlates with the complications of an infection, especially COVID, and someone's outcome from COVID. Vitamin D also controls another vitamin called folate, as far as the receptors go. And folate is also heavily associated with problems with COVID. You could be getting enough folate, right, from the diet or a vitamin, but not having enough vitamin D to allow that folate to work. And that also relates to the severity of symptoms from COVID, as well as post-COVID long-haul syndrome. The COVID virus actually alters over 100 vitamin D-related genes in the lung. So if someone has shortness of breath or a tendency to have more inflammation in the lungs or lower respiratory infections, suspect vitamin D deficiency, especially recurrent lung infections because that virus tends to uh, destroy or alter these genes. In fact, when someone has a vitamin D gene problem, they're five times more likely to get viral infections and have worse complications. That's all really interesting, but what is the solution? How do we bypass this genetic barrier and the absorption barrier, et cetera? Well, you could use topical vitamin D. It's called nano emulsion technology where you're putting it right through the skin. That's one option that some people do. You can also use semi-activated vitamin D, but the problem with that is it's a bit expensive and you have to get a prescription. And, or some people are even doing light therapy, like UVB uh, therapy. But I think the simplest way to fix this problem is just to take more vitamin D. And I'm talking minimally 10,000 IUs a day. But there's some additional really cool ninja things that you can do to make this thing work better and faster. The first thing relates to not taking vitamin D on a regular basis. So I wouldn't necessarily especially if you have this problem, I wouldn't recommend just taking 10,000 IUs every single day. They have found that if you take it irregular or not frequently, okay, you'll get better outcomes. So for example, you were taking 10,000 IUs for seven days. That would give you 70,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per week. You would do much better if you broke that up in maybe two doses, one 50,000 IUs of vitamin D3, okay? And then you wait three days and take the other 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Number two, vitamin D works much better when it comes with the cofactors that allow it to work better. In fact, those cofactors like magnesium, zinc, vitamin K2, also decrease any complications for vitamin D toxicity, especially at the levels we're talking about. And just as a side note, um, the toxicity of vitamin D3 will occur if you're taking hundreds of thousands of international units of vitamin D3 for many, many months. What we're talking about is a much lower dose and it, you're not gonna have a problem. A couple other things can help you absorb vitamin D3. Uh, one is intense exercise. Another thing is butyrate that your microbe makes from consuming fiber, as in salads. So if you're consuming regular salads or vegetables, you're gonna get the fiber that will make this chemical that will help the absorption of vitamin D. It's also going to help other things too, like uh, giving you more energy. It's going to help your blood sugars and all the great things that come along with that. Another thing that I found that will help the absorption of vitamin D is to consume sulforaphane. And the way you can get that is just by adding a little bit of broccoli sprouts or even other sprouts like radish sprouts to your salad. You don't even need much. You can just use a little bit. And of course, omega-3, as in fish oils or better yet, cod liver oil, can help make vitamin D get absorbed better. So that's vitamin D. Um, there is another vitamin that could be involved in this long haul COVID, and that would be vitamin B1 because vitamin B1 has everything to do about making sure that your mitochondria, that's the energy factory inside your cell that converts food into energy and that converts food into the raw materials that build your bodies. and Thymine, or B1, is the spark plug. So we can't neglect vitamin B1, especially if you have a history of consuming refined 
carbohydrates as in breads and pastas and cereal and crackers and things like that, or sugars, or if you've been on an antibiotic. Antibiotics also deplete vitamin B1. Stress can also deplete B1. And even being on the ketogenic diet can increase the demand for not just B1, but all the B vitamins. You may want to also take a B complex while you're taking this vitamin D, just to make sure that you're not deficient. Make sure it's uh, natural Bs, like a nutritional yeast, or even taking a natural B1 by itself in a blend of other B vitamins would be a very smart thing. The clue that someone needs more B1 related to this problem is that if they have dizziness, okay, because that involves um, the autonomic nervous system. So if you have autonomic nervous system issues, especially dizziness, or let's say you get up and you feel dizzy, or you have any type of autonomic problem, and that could be a lot of different problems, suspect B1 because of what this virus did to a part of your brain or brain stem, which is the area that uh, causes all these problems. There's also evidence of B3 being involved because vitamin B3 is intimately involved in this mitochondria I've talked about. But I want to make sure you have everything you need to really overcome these uh, this long-haul uh, COVID problem. Now, of course, since we're on the topic of the immune system and vitamin D, if you have not seen this video on vitamin D, I think it'd be very, very wise to check it out. And I put it up right here.